How's everyone doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today I want to talk about Italy threatening to give temporary EU visas to over 200,000 so-called refugees and migrants that currently live within Italy. Now, the reason for this is because they're pretty much being inundated with all these refugees that come from West Africa via North Africa. I'll talk about that whole process in a little bit, but they're being inundated and they can't do anything about it. They're trying to ask the European neighbors for help, but they're not getting any help. I think in 2015, when they had almost 200,000 refugees again, the European Union said, hey, we'll help you out. We'll settle a lot of them, but only a fraction of them, I think seven to 8,000 were actually settled in other places. And the remainder are pretty much just right there. So they're dealing with a constant, very high level of refugees that are just in Italy and nowhere else. At the border of Austria and Italy and South Tyrol, there's like a blockade to prevent any of the refugees from leaving Italy and coming to Austria or through Austria to Germany, France or elsewhere. So they don't want refugees. Nobody wants the refugees. And that's pretty much the situation. Now, I don't blame Austria. I don't blame Hungary. I don't blame Poland. I don't blame anybody. But at the end of the day, what is Italy going to do? Right. Now, the visas, granting them the visa was to give them the option to be in the Schengen zone. Now, what the Schengen zone means is that there's no travel restricted between countries that are in it. So if you got a European Union visa, you have free access to all these countries, or at least they should. That's how the Schengen zone works. Now, I don't know if the Schengen zone is going to be able to remain. There are certain countries in the European Union that are not in the Schengen zone, but most of them are. Deputy Foreign Minister Mario Giro and Senator Luigi Manconi, yes, Mario and Luigi, they told the Times that this whole thing about the visas, that is on the table, and they think they'll be able to do it because of a little-known directive called European Council Directive 2001-55, which was drafted after the Balkan conflicts, and it involves giving temporary EU visas to people that are of displaced countries displaced people now of course the balkans that's in europe this directive was not intended for people that came from africa and the middle east as economic migrants for the most part when you look at one of these boats that has the so-called refugees on it which i'll talk about in a little bit how they got from point a to point b to point c they all have pretty much the same kind of people war age men 18 to 35 or 40 it's not any women it's not any children or any elderly people, even though those people exist. They must exist. There has to be old people. There has to be young people. There has to be women. They must exist in these countries where they're coming from, but they're not on these boats because these men are economic migrants. They're really being smuggled or human trafficked or whatever you want to call it. People traffic, people smuggled, whatever the term is. They're being taken from West Africa, Nigeria, Togo, Benin, Ghana, etc., up through the Sahara Desert to Libya. And then at that point, they're put on the boat and they're taking 22 miles out. And then you have a distress call that's made. And at that point, the Italians or the Greeks are obligated to come get them. That's what's going on. But see, the problem is this whole thing is being exploited. That whole 22 miles out thing that's being exploited. First of all, in order to get from West Africa across the Sahara into North Africa on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, that's very expensive. And it's not just by happenstance that they happen to be there. You have coyotes that pretty much do it, human traffickers or whatever. And a lot of times you have the NGOs or charities or whatever name they want to be called by. They're in on it. They call themselves being charitable by bringing the refugees uh, to the ports of Italy, well, not to the ports, but to the actual boats of Italy, the naval forces. But really, a lot of that is being coordinated by the coyotes. Look at it like this. The coyotes are saying, hey, we can get you across the Sahara Desert, right? We'll get you across the Sahara Desert. We'll get you to the actual coast. And then once you get to the coast, you're going to be put in the hands of the NGO. The NGO will bring you out to the water and then they'll coordinate with the Italians by sending a distress call. Right. We'll be out there with you and we'll kind of coordinate it. So a lot of that's going on. It's a lot of human trafficking going on. And the reason why it's happening is because there's money behind it. These people come from very poor countries, but they do have some money. And sometimes when they actually get to the coast, when they get to Libya, I'm talking about the West Africans. What happens is they get sold as slaves. 
Sometimes the money's not there to pay off the coyote. Sometimes the NGOs are not cooperating and they get sold as slaves. They get put into a prison and now they're slaves again. So you have a big open slave market, a human trafficking market and a migration crisis that is wrecking Italy and shaking them down to its core, extracting all their resources. And it's all about money. Now, at the end of the day, the reason why it's happening, the reason why you keep having all these people that come to Libya to risk becoming a slave, to risk becoming victim to the Mediterranean Sea, drowning or whatever, starving to death, dying of thirst. The reason why they're coming out there is because of the magnet of France, Germany, Sweden, and other European countries with very generous welfare benefits, right? That's the reason some of these so-called refugees will come to a European country and be granted refuge, be given the job, maybe, maybe a little bit of money, but they don't want to stay there because they know that there's a greater opportunity to get more money through welfare, maybe a job, but mostly the welfare, or maybe both, maybe a welfare and a job. So then what they do, they keep on going north or they keep on going to wherever they want to go and they refuse the refuge, they refuse the money, they refuse the job at the place that they're at. So it's not about being a refugee. And like I said earlier, if it was about being a refugee, then there will be women, there will be children, there will be elderly people. But in all these photos of these dinghies that wind up in the Mediterranean Sea, never really see anybody that is old, a child or a woman. You see all war age men between the ages of 18 to 35 or 40. That's pretty much what it is. Now, I don't blame Italy for feeling like they're trapped in this situation. But at the end of the day, the policy that's making this all happen is the 22 miles out rescue. That's the main thing that's making this all happen. If it was not for that, then they wouldn't be in a situation to begin with because they would not be able to go to Italy if it was not for that. Right now, the NGOs may attempt to take them all the way to the shore, but I think that could easily be blocked as well by the Italians. So you can just solve it by closing up your ports and by not rescuing and Italy is trying to say that Poland, uh, Czech Republic and other countries that are in the Schengen zone that are in the EU that are in Europe should take their fair share of migrants. But I don't blame them for not taking their fair share of migrants, because, first of all, countries like Poland, Hungary, et cetera, further Eastern Europe, they're not necessarily extremely wealthy. They're not third world countries, but they're not like. UK, France, Germany, etc., with endless amounts of resources, essentially. They're not like that, so they can't even really afford it. And beyond the financial impact of a bunch of migrants in the country, you have the social impact. Everybody knows that these migrants, so called migrants, refugees, economic uh, migrants, they bring violence, they bring crime, they bring sexual predatory natures, they bring a dangerous ideology. Many of them are Islamic, not all of them, of course, because West Africa, you got a lot of Christians, but you got a lot of Islamic people as well, especially those that do not come from Africa, those that come from the Middle East, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, or whatever. They bring the Islamic culture to a place, and all that does is just ruin the culture that was already there. It interferes with the lives of the common citizens of the country that are ethnic and native to a place, the indigenous peoples, so to speak. So at the end of the day, nobody wants that in the country. And I cannot blame them. I cannot blame the people that live there for not wanting that in their country. It's pretty simple. But as I close here, I think the solution would be to stop the rescuing, stop the allowing of every person that comes on a boat into your country. If you want to rescue them out on the water, just turn them back around where they came from. That'd make more sense. If they're 22 miles out away from the coast of Libya, it'd be closer to bring them back to Libya rather than bringing them to Sicily or to Malta or to wherever their destination is. Right. And to Poland, to Hungary, to Czech Republic and to the other EU nations that do not want to have these migrants in your country. Keep holding strong. Do not allow anybody to pressure you. I think what Italy is doing by releasing them or threatening to release them into Europe would be kind of a wake up call to the beacons, to the countries that attract these so-called refugees into Europe. You're talking about France, Germany, et cetera. If they just repeal their policy of extremely generous welfare benefits, repeal the whole uh, refugee friendly mindset, then I think a lot of these things that are going on right now would not happen. But what do you think? Do you think it's a good thing for Italy to unleash 200,000 
you know, almost a quarter million people, refugees into Europe by giving them European visas. They can go all throughout the Schengen zone. Is that a good thing? You know, because if you got an EU visa, you're able to go to Poland. Poland right now does not want refugees. Austria does not want refugees. They have a blockade right there at South Tyrol in between Italy and Austria right there at the border. So the migrants that are in Italy right now cannot go north that way illegally. But if they get a visa, what are they going to do at that point? Do you think it's a good thing for Italy to do what they're doing or is it a bad thing? What will the impact be? Will it break apart the Schengen zone? Because if they have EU visas and they're allowed to go all over the place and you keep having more to come into Italy and they're given that same option because let's not forget this is a constant thing. People keep coming to Italy every single day. People keep trying to do the whole uh, smuggling thing through the Sahara Desert from West Africa into Libya. There's still slaves being sold right now in Libya of people that become vulnerable. They get held hostage and sold for ransom. So that whole thing is going to continue to happen as long as the beacon of the generous welfare policy of Western Europe still exists. So you're going to have more and more and more and more that are going to continue to flood Europe through this whole thing. If it's allowed to go through, I think there must be an approval process. But what do you think? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? What have I missed about this whole situation? Is there a wrinkle in it that I've not addressed? I've addressed the whole thing about how it came about the 2001 slide 55 directive from the European Council that says that you're able to give temporary EU visas to so-called displaced persons and how it was not intended for economic migrants from Africa. It was intended for legitimate war victims in the Balkan region. But whatever your comments are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.